Welcome to this video tutorial. In this session, we'll guide you through building a vibrant digital clock using an ESP8266 board and three WS2812B 8x8 LED panels. Step by step, we'll cover everything from hardware setup to code configuration, helping you create this eye-catching clock display. For this project, you'll need a few essential components, an ESP8266 board, such as the Node MCU or Wemos D1 Mini, to control the animations, three WS2812B 8x8 LED matrix panels to showcase the time with colorful effects, and a stable 5 volt power supply to meet the current demands of the LED panels. To kick off this project, start by preparing the three WS2812B 8x8 LED matrix panels. Solder jumper wires to their power, ground, and data input pins to ensure reliable connections, which is crucial when powering multiple LEDs, as illustrated in the diagram. Note, for this demonstration, we've used the board's power supply to power the LED panels at minimum brightness. However, for optimal performance and full functionality in your project, we recommend using an external DC 5V power source. To run the provided code, you need to install a few essential libraries. First, ESP8266 Wi-Fi. H is necessary for connecting your ESP8266 to Wi-Fi, allowing it to communicate over the network. Next, you'll need Adafruit underscore GFX. H, which is a core graphics library that enables you to draw shapes and text on your display. Additionally, Adafruit underscore NeoMatrix. H is required specifically for controlling the NeoPixel matrix, facilitating the vibrant effects and animations. Lastly, the time. H library is used for handling time-related functions, ensuring your clock displays the correct time. Make sure all these libraries are installed in your Arduino IDE for the code to function properly. The code specifies data pin 2, corresponding to D4 on the ESP8266, which means the data signal will be sent through GPIO pin 2, D4, on boards like Node MCU or Wemos D1 Mini. To connect your ESP8266 to Wi-Fi for retrieving time information, enter your Wi-Fi SSID and password in the designated fields of your code. Ensure that the SSID and password are accurate and case-sensitive to establish a successful connection. It's important to adjust the NTP server settings for your specific location by entering the correct GMT offset value. This adjustment ensures that you receive the accurate time for your country. In the video description, we've listed the GMT offset values for different countries, be sure to reference this list and update your settings accordingly to reflect the correct time. The serial monitor is enabled to show the Wi-Fi connection status, helping you track progress and troubleshoot any issues with your ESP8266 connection. Before compiling the code, it's essential to modify the Wi-Fi and NTP settings for your ESP8266. Enter your Wi-Fi SSID and password to enable network connectivity, and specify the NTP server along with the appropriate GMT offset value for your location. Once you've made these modifications, ensure there are no errors during compilation to guarantee smooth functionality. Note, this NTP clock code provides a straightforward integration of the ESP8266 with a WS2812B LED display. In this series, we'll explore additional features and advanced options to enhance functionality. In other tutorials, we'll also cover creating a vibrant, enhanced clock display with customizable color options. Next, upload the code to your ESP8266, ensuring there are no compilation errors that could disrupt the upload or functionality. Once the upload completes, open the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE to monitor the Wi-Fi connection status. A successful connection will display the message, connected, on your serial monitor, confirming that your ESP8266 is online. Additionally, the LED matrix will light up, showing the current time adjusted to the GMT offset you've set in the code, accurately reflecting the time for your country or region. You can adjust the LED brightness and digit color to match your personal preferences. 
For customization options, please follow the link provided in the description, where we guide you through modifying the code to suit your specific needs. For further clarification, we provide in-depth explanations of these features in additional segments of this video series. Additionally, you can explore more examples of code related to LED display projects. If you found this video helpful, please consider supporting us by liking, sharing, or subscribing to our channel. Your support enables us to create more content and offer valuable resources to our audience. Every bit of support is greatly appreciated. Thank you.